In addition to the guidelines about what goes in each section and how citations and references are formatted, APA style includes specific rules for formatting documents. The new edition of the guidelines, the seventh edition, makes most of the formatting easier. And I know a video about formatting a paper might seem like as much fun as, well, you get the idea. But I do want to make sure you know how to use Microsoft Word to for, format a document in APA style. And the process also touch base on what's included in the document. It might be helpful to note that the seventh edition includes guidelines for two types of papers, one for students and one for professionals. I was excited to see that because it acknowledges that it makes sense to adjust formatting for different purposes. That says, said, many of the elements are similar, if not the same. I'm going to focus on the student version, though, since understanding how to format for that purpose will also help you when you format for other purposes. In the past, I provided students with a template to help format their papers. Microsoft Word tries to think for us in ways that sometimes make it just as tricky to use a template as it is to format the document on your own, though, particularly with the simplifications in the new version. APA does provide a number of resources on the internet, including a template. You can find it by doing a Google search for apa.org sample paper. The files that are in the docs format are the Microsoft Word documents that you can use by replacing the example content with your own. I'm going to walk you through all the formatting and how to use Microsoft Word to do that in this recording, too, so you can make sure your document's consistent with APA style. Whether you use the template and need to double check that nothing changed, or you started with a blank file. APA style papers traditionally include a title page. The student version includes seven pieces of information, as noted on this slide. I think they're pretty straightforward, so we won't talk about each one. Let me know, though, if I'm not thinking of something. The formatting of the title page includes a few notable details. First, the page number is included in the header at the top right corner of the page. I'll explain how to do that in a second. This is counted as the first page of the document. The header is different from previous versions and from professional formatting, so it might seem like something's missing if you're familiar with that version. Unless you've been told otherwise, though, all you need for a class assignment is the page number. The content of the page itself is centered. You'll hit enter to add six or eight blank lines above the title and then type the title in bold font and title case. I have to admit, I've been winging it a little bit when it came to capitalization, but when I was updating the materials for the new APA manual, I discovered that there is a section that provides specific details. 6.17 if you'd like to read more. The quick version is that title case means the major words are capitalized. For the most part, that means words with four letters or more. There are a couple of exceptions, though. A minor word is capitalized if it's at the beginning of the title or after punctuation. Verbs are also considered always considered major words, so is and be are always capitalized. The most complicated part of the formatting is adding the page number in the header. If you're using a template, you probably won't have to do this step, but it's good to know how. To add a page number in the header of a blank document, go to the Insert menu at the top of the Microsoft Word document and look toward the right to find the option that says Page Number. Then click on that and move your cursor over the option that says Top of Page. That, that will open a list of options. And for APA style, select the one that's labeled plain numbered three. Okay, side note, one of the things I appreciate about APA style is I don't have to think about how I want to format the document because it tells me what to do. The downside of that, though, is that it doesn't allow for very much creativity. That means selecting any of the other options for where to place the page number or how to format it would mean the document is not formatted in APA style. Materials from APA indicate that an abstract is, quote, not usually required for student papers, end quote, so the sample of student papers don't use one. I wanted to make sure to talk about the abstract, though, because you might be required to write one. It's good practice to think about summarizing the important ideas for a reader who needs a quick overview for one reason or another. When an abstract is included, 
it's on its own page, always page two of the document. The heading is centered on the first line on the page and formatted in bold font. One quirky thing is that this paragraph is not indented. I think it's the only one in the paper that isn't, which makes me think there's still a few things that are like secret codes for people in a special APA style club. Anyway, your student paper might not need to include keywords. In professional papers, they're used to help with the database searches. If you do need to include them, they're on the line below the abstract. That line's indented and the word keywords is at the beginning, followed by a colon with the word and the colon in italics. I thought it might be good to point out a couple of things in Microsoft Word at this point. I don't want to assume everyone knows about the program. And even if you do, it can be overwhelming and so much so that it's easy to forget what you do know. There are a few ways we can make a font bold face and center a line for the heading. So you might do it a different way. One way is to make sure you're looking at the home menu. It's usually the default menu we see and using the options I circle in this slide. The technical for term for how text is placed in the document side to side is alignment. So when I say that the heading is centered, that's a quick way to say the heading is aligned to the center of the page. Notice that I circled the options to align text to the center and to the left margin. Those are the only two alignments we use in APA style. If one of the other icons in that row is selected, your document will not be in APA style. One thing I've noticed a lot in student papers is the headings that are supposed to be on the first line of the page are often lower, a little lower, a lot lower. Easiest way to keep that from happening is to use the Microsoft Word tools to insert a page break in the text instead of hitting the enter button until the heading looks like it's at the top of the page. More specifically, delete any extra lines so your heading is below the text on the page before you want it to be. For the abstract, that means you'd have the abstract heading on your title page. Then click right before the first letter of the heading, so your cursor is before that letter. letter. After that, you'll select the Insert menu in the options at the top of the document screen and click Page Break to the left of that menu. That'll move the line to the top of the next page. I think of the intro and lit review method results discussion as being the body of the paper in APA style. There are a few details specific to each section that we tend to cover when we're talking about those sections. So I'll just touch on the guidelines that span all of them. The ones for headings and for formatting the text. APA style uses five possible formats for headings and called levels. There are guidelines though about when each level is used. Remember what I said earlier about not being able to get creative. The first heading in a main section is always level one, and centered, bold, and title case. You might have already noticed the title of the paper on the title page and the headings for the abstract were formatted as level one headings. If you used previous versions of APA style, you might notice too that headings are another thing that was simplified in the seventh edition. Note that the only punctuation that might be used as part of the heading formatting is a period. Colons are not used in APA style headings. If you're writing a research proposal or report, you'll definitely use the first two levels and probably the third, but you might not ever use the fourth and fifth levels. The Content of the heading for the intro and lit review is a little different than that of the others. It's not the name of the section. Instead, the title of the paper is repeated on the first line of the page after the title page or the abstract, depending on whether an abstract was required. The formatting and content is the same as on the title page. The only difference is that there aren't lines above the heading and the content of the section starts on the next line. The method section includes a level one heading that's the word method singular, and level two headings for the common subsections. I didn't include the procedure on this slide because the formatting is the same as the other level two headings. Note though that it is also singular. In other words, it's procedure. You can also use a level three heading for each measure in the material subsection. Materials is plural, by the way. 
There are three things to note when it comes to formatting the text and the body of the paper, and two of the three apply to the entire document. The two that apply to the entire document are spacing and font choice. All of the documents double spaced, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. Yep, with Microsoft Word, there's more to explain about what double space means. Times New Roman 12 point font used to be the only acceptable font in APA style, but the seventh edition loosens up quite a bit. We just need to use the same font for the entire document and use a font that would be acceptable in work settings. The default work font in Microsoft Word is fine. Comic Sans and other decorative fonts are not fine. The formatting that varies in different sections of the document is the indentation. As I mentioned earlier, the text is always aligned to the left margin, but the indentation varies. In the body of the paper, APA uses the more traditional format with the first line of each paragraph indented. Double spacing seems like it should be relatively straightforward. Microsoft makes it a little less so though, because the default settings in Word automatically add extra space between paragraphs, which means it's not all double spaced. <sighs> Good news is, it's relatively easy to take out. You start by selecting all of the text in the document. The easiest way to do that is to hold down the Control key and the A key at the same time. The Home menu at the top of the document includes a section labeled Paragraph that includes a button to set the spacing. You can use that menu to select 2.0 to double space the document. Some versions of Word also have the options I circled at the bottom of the spacing menu. If there isn't any extra space between paragraph, the options change to add space. So if you see an option to remove it, you want to select that. If you don't have any options about paragraph spacing in the line spacing menu, you can also remove it by selecting the layout menu in Microsoft Word and finding the section labeled spacing and circled in this slide. The number next to before and after should be zero. If that space is blank, you can type a zero in the box and press enter. It might stay blank if the program thinks there's some hidden spacing information, but as long as you have all of the text selected and tell it to make the spacing zero, it seems to work. In thinking about formatting an APA style document, there are four things to keep in mind. First, the page number is always in the upper right-hand corner of the page and in the header. Second, the heading formatting varies depending where the heading is at in the document, but there are clear guidelines for formatting each of those levels. Third, the entire document is double-spaced, and that means there isn't extra space between paragraphs. Which leads us to the last thing to keep in mind. Microsoft Word can be helpful, and it can be a challenge. When we know that, though, the document formatting is relatively easy.